Hello, I'm James Jacobson in Hawaii. And I'm Pamela Lawrence in San Francisco. And I'm Caroline Winter in Adelaide. Adelaide, Australia, down under. Caroline is a new member of Dog Podcast Network's team. And it's great to have you with us, Caroline. Thanks, Jim. I'm so excited to join Dog Edition, Dog Podcast Network, and Team Dog. And as you know, I'm a news hound from way back, but now I get to tell stories about the thing I love most, dogs, through the medium I love most, podcasting. You're very punny, so you'll fit in <laughs> well here. Uh, Caroline joins us uh, formerly from the ABC, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, and we're so glad to have you with us. Thanks so much. It's uh, awesome to be here. <laughs> oh, she fits oh, right in. <laughs> this is going to get fun. <laughs> and welcome to you, listener, because you're listening to Dog Edition, the first show designed for you to listen to while you walk your dogs. And today we have a bit of a theme as we look at the pet business and people who make their living with their passion of loving dogs and trying to commercialize it in some way. First up, we're going to talk pet influencers. Now, they've become such a big thing globally, and I had a chance to meet one locally here in Adelaide. And then later on in the show, I learned a new term, petpreneurs. These are pet businesses, a little name for pet startup businesses. And I didn't know this, but they are mostly run by women. And then later in the show, please join us for our hydrant section, where we will run down some of the doggy headlines that have captured our attention this week. So if you love dogs as much as we do, pause what you're doing, leash up your pup, and let's take a walk. We've got a lot to talk about on today's episode of Dog Edition. Hey, Pepper, want to go for a walk? Dogs have been earning people money for years. This is not a new concept. What is new, new ish, is the segment of the pet business world called social media influencer. And yes, you can earn a living from it. They were two of the early stars of the big screen as far back as the 1920s. And German shepherds Strongheart and Rin Tin Tin set the scene for the many dog stars to come. Among them, Lassie the long haired collie. What's the matter, Lassie? Don't you want me to go? I'll be out for as usual. Then there was the slobbering St. Bernard, Beethoven. He'll tell us what he wants to be called. <laughs> and Red Dog, the Aussie outback Kelpie cattle dog cross. The world is a funny place, no? Sometimes you pick your dog. Sometimes your dog picks you. But being a celebrity dog these days doesn't have to mean Hollywood or being on the big screen. In fact, it almost certainly means something else altogether. There are tons of influ pet influencers out there. There are all kinds of animals that are famous. There's famous dogs and there's famous cats and even we have a celebrity duck <laughs> that has over a million followers. At the end of the day, our messaging is just a happy little dog. We dress him up occasionally and um, the fun hasn't disappeared from it. So yeah, we're pretty lucky. In this tale you're about to hear, being a celebrity pooch has everything to do with a former lawyer in Massachusetts and a couple of Brussels Griffin in Australia. Hello. How, How are, are you? Good. How are you? Thank you. Oh, here we go. Thank you. Thank you. So okay. It's not every day you get to meet someone famous, but inside this pretty suburban Adelaide house in South Australia, I'm meeting not one, but two celebrities. I'm Suzanne, I'm the mum of Squid and Pretzel, the Brussels Griffins, and more, more often known as at Squid the Griff. With 390,000 followers on Instagram, four-year-old Squid and two-year-old Pretzel are no strangers to the paparazzi. They have an agent, an annual calendar and a bunch of other merchandise featuring their hairy little faces. And these pint-sized Brussels Griffin, a breed of toy dog named after Brussels in Belgium, have anything but pint-sized personalities. 
Well, Squid's the lover. He's all he wants is just to be with me and just to have a little snuggle and um, yeah, lots of pats. Whereas Pretzel is just a firecracker. He keeps you on your toes. You never know what he's going to do. He's um, got some weird quirks as well. Weighing in at four kilos each, Squid and Pretzel are a playful pair and both sport a whole lot of sass with their big round eyes, serious faces and shaggy beards. And it's these characteristics that have made them a couple of the hottest things on four legs. But as Suzanne Nichols tells me, it wasn't her intention when she posted that first pic back in 2017. My sister recommended that he had a very funny face, so why don't we just share him with the world? So I put up a photo and instantly we got about a couple hundred followers because I guess people just like Brussels griffins as a breed, so it was just popularity through that. And that photo of a frowning squid would be the catalyst for what was to come. I received an email. I remember I was standing in the line waiting to hold a koala at a wildlife park and um, they asked if they could share the photo with their followers on the dogs of Instagram the next day. And then it went up and I think within an hour or two we'd gained about 20,000 followers just from that share and then it just snowballed from there and it was totally unexpected. Professional American wrestler and TV presenter John Cena shared it, as did musician and producer Moby. And it was in that moment that Suzanne realised Squid was going to become a dog influencer. I think what takes up the most time is, is answering messages and commenting, but that's my favourite part of the page, seeing people's reactions. But we're also on pages like Cameo, so people request Cameos from the boys as well. So that takes up a little bit more time, but... Our number one thing is um, making sure that they're happy. We don't force anything on them. We don't dress them up um, when they're not in the mood. They're number one. Squid and Pretzel <laughs> clearly aren't divas. They're just a couple of happy-go-lucky poochers who like to zoom around the yard when they're not being insta-famous. For her part, Suzanne says they're all just enjoying the ride for as long as it lasts. We're about just a happy dog, <laughs> as you can hear, and just, yeah, flying by the seat of our pants. And that approach and laid-back Aussie attitude to being a dog influencer definitely works. Yes, yes, I've seen the account. Squid is absolutely adorable. <laughs> the Squid the Griff Instagram account has caught the eye of one of the biggest in the biz on the other side of the world. My name is Lonnie Edwards and I am the founder and CEO of the dog agency and PetCon. And uh, I'm currently living in Massachusetts. The dog agency is the brainchild of Lonnie Edwards, a talent management and marketing agency for social media celebrity pets. A lot of the day is spent just looking at cute photos and videos of dogs, whether it's uh, branded content or just creative content that they're making and coming up with like fun ideas. It, it's truly the best job in the entire world. The popularity of pet social media accounts have exploded in the past few years, particularly on Instagram. Jif the Pomeranian has 10.4 million followers. That's more than singer Pink, chef Jamie Oliver and the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. The dog agency doesn't represent Brussels Griffin, Squid and Pretzel. They've got their own agent in Australia. But Lonnie Edwards works with a whole host of high-profile pets right around the world. It's, it's a very big business. It is so much more work than people expect. Uh, you have to create tons of content. Uh, it takes a lot of time to come up with the ideas, to edit it, to post, to build a community on social media. But it's one of the most rewarding things you can do. There are all kinds of animals that are famous. There's famous dogs and there's famous cats. And even we have a celebrity duck <laughs> that has over a million followers. So it truly has expanded. Uh, in types of animals and it just the world is just growing rapidly and it's very exciting. And the company's keen to get involved in the space has grown massively. It's not just products for pets either, but human facing brands like Amazon, Netflix and Dyson to cleaning products and fashion lines, all keen for a slice of the pie. Just how much a pet influencer can earn really depends on the size of their following and the engagement of their audience, as well as the kind of work that they do for the brand they're hooked up with. But roughly, Lonnie says per sponsored post, a pet influencer with 100,000 followers will get one to $2,000. Those with a million plus followers are looking at ten to $15,000. So what are brands looking for in a pet ambassador? So when, when brands are looking with, to work with influencers, they want to reach an audience of people that trust 
the influencer. So not only are they getting all the eyeballs, but they're very important eyeballs because they listen and trust the the messenger. So so that is that is what's valuable about influencer marketing. And then when you take that to pets, you get all of that plus all of these extra factors. They spread joy. Even just looking at their photos raises endorphins. They make people happy. People associate those positive, happy feelings with a given brand partner. Uh, they're safe. They're not going to get drunk at a party or, or say something offensive. They're they're just the, the perfect form of influencer. There's also a fine line between influencing and exploitation when it comes to branding a pet. And that's something Lonnie Edwards is very mindful of. And so when we're looking at a potential client to bring on, we do interviews with them. We get a feel for the relationship they have with their pet making sure that it is a positive relationship, that the pet is enjoying this, that this is a positive experience. That is of utmost importance to us is making sure that the pet is having fun and enjoying the process. If you're like the millions of dog owners like me who just like to post photos of your furry friend on the socials for a bit of fun, carry on. But if you've already dipped your toe in the pet influencer world or might be thinking about taking things to that next level, have a listen to Lonnie's top tips to help get you there. Coming up with your brand is definitely important. So what is going to make people want to stay on and follow and see your content day in and day out? So how can you add value is is probably the number one. From there, you want to be part of the community. So you want to respond to the messages you get. You want to respond to the comments. And then at the end of the day, have fun. Like you're creating content, you're working with your furry best friend. It is so much fun. You're spreading joy around the world. So so have fun with it. It is definitely important as well. And that's a sentiment Suzanne Nichols in South Australia is all over when it comes to squid and pretzel. At the end of the day, our messaging is just a happy little dog. We dress him up occasionally and um, yeah, but it's just a lot of fun. The fun hasn't disappeared from it. So yeah, we're pretty lucky. For Dog Edition, I'm Caroline Winter in Adelaide, South Australia. That was a great segment, Caroline. Caro, as we will call you here. Um, It was uh, wonderful, and and it was very fitting that that was your first contribution to Dog Edition because that actually was a segment that you had produced for us as an entry in our 101 Dog Stories contest. So you can win. If you've a listener wondering, can I actually win this contest? Yes, you can win this contest and not only win... uh, you know, your your shot at fifteen thousand dollars, but you can get a full time job with us. So check out that at uh, dogpodcastnetwork dot com slash one hundred and one. Did you have fun making that piece, Caroline? Oh, I had so much fun and I could be so creative. And now I have a new appreciation for pet influencers and Brussels Griffin. We'll be right back. You're listening to Dog Edition. Hi, it's me again, James Jacobson, and there are three things that you should know about me. One, since 2003, I have been driven by an all-consuming mission. That mission is to help improve the quality of life for dogs and the people who love them. Two, I have founded or helped to co-found several companies that share that mission, including Dog Podcast Network. And three, every day, I give my dogs Everpup, the ultimate daily dog supplement made by Functional Nutriments, which is one of those companies. What? is Everpup. Everpup is an extraordinary all-in-one supplement that you sprinkle on your dog's food. It's a polyceutical, which means it contains an incredible blend of lots of different human-grade ingredients. It contains vitamins and minerals and prebiotics and probiotics and enzymes and dietary apoptogens and so much more. What you need to know is that it supports every cell and system in your dog's body. And Everpup is appropriate no matter what type of diet you feed your dog, from kibble to raw food to home cooked. And the rich green powder is easy to add to food. Dogs love the taste, they find it delicious. And you can even try it yourself because Everpup is made with 100% human grade ingredients. It's made here in the USA in an FDA registered and inspected laboratory. And all the ingredients are ethically sourced and triple checked for quality. Seeing is believing, so try Everpup for a month and see what happens with your dog. Everpup is available through select veterinarians and pet shops and Amazon, but here is the best way to try Everpup. Join the Everpup Club and get free shipping to any U.S. address. As a listener to this podcast, you can get your first shipment of Everpup 
for just $8, including free shipping, when you use the discount code DOGEDITION. For all the details, go to everpupclub.com and try your first full jar of Everpup for just $8. That's everpupclub.com. Welcome back to Dog Edition. Are you ready to embark on a new business venture? Why not match your love of dogs with that great skill or that great idea? Do you bake? Maybe you could try making gourmet dog treats. Perhaps you can sew. Canine couture might be for you. Pet photographers, dog walkers, dog sitters, or like Suzanne, being a social media pet influencer, well, there's no end to ideas for pet businesses, especially since the boom in pandemic puppy adoptions. So maybe now might be the perfect time to get started as a petpreneur. So I think that there are so many amazingly talented petpreneurs, and and that's such a huge area. You know, I, I think that people who aren't in our space don't understand how diverse and huge that is. That was Tori Mystic, the founder of Wear Wag Repeat, a multimedia brand for dog moms that features dog content and petpreneur resources. Petpreneurs is the catch-all term for someone who organizes and operates a pet business. This is a field dominated by women. Kristen Morrison runs the Six Figure Pet Business Academy. There are men, and I'm sure there are men listening to this right now, and I really want to celebrate you and say, yay, woohoo, you're here. Uh, They have a hard time sometimes getting into the industry. And so there's some gender bias that can happen for men. For some, the choice to start a pet business is a carefully calculated decision. For others, the opportunity presents itself, as it did with Tori. I was a fashion blogger before fashion blogs existed. (laughs) I just kind of like lived that life. I, I loved getting dressed up all the time and taking cool creative photos. And so I was doing that before. I even had anywhere to blog about it. But I wanted to be different, of course. And so I incorporated my dogs into all of my outfit photos. That choice to include the dogs in the photos created an opportunity for Tori. The community reading her fashion blog began commenting on the dogs more than the outfits. It was a light bulb moment for her. The fashion blogging world was very difficult to make a name for yourself in, but Uh, The dog blogging community was so friendly and so welcome, and um, people would come and leave comments on my blog, and I got to know people who I still know now, um, and, and that's how I ended up being a dog blogger. There are 900 million dogs in the world. In the U.S., nearly half of American households own dogs. Figures are similar for U.K. households. Combine the size of that target audience with the scalability and simplicity of many dog-related businesses, and you have a dog biscuit recipe for success. That's the cool thing about the world and work today is that if you have an idea, you can go online and look at a couple YouTube videos and and read a couple articles, and you can figure out almost anything. And so I very quickly ramped it up. You know, I'm happy to be transparent about it. The first year that I was monetizing, I set a goal to make $10,000 off of it. Uh, And I was still doing my other job at the time. Um, But I set this $10,000 goal and I ended up making $12,000. You know, it's nice. It's always nice to even if you get over by $1 um, to get over your goal. So that was the first year. And I was like, wow, you know, this this could be a thing. And I think the more time I can put into it, the more profitable and more revenue I could generate. Tori left her full-time job to pivot completely into her pet business. She added a podcast, an online shop, and an Instagram account to the mix. And because she has a background as a social media consultant, she knew how to grow her reach through social media marketing. To get more followers, to get new followers, you have to go and reach out and socialize because it's social media. Um, You got to go socialize with people who aren't following you yet. So you need to go on um, hashtags within your niche or click on the people who are already following you and then click on their friend list and see who their friends are. Um, You want to comment. And, and kind of start a dialogue with them that makes them want to get to know you better and follow you. So maybe you've seen a picture of a dog posted on social media with tons of likes and comments and have had the thought, why? 
My dog is just as cute. I don't get that many likes. Well, that's sort of like looking at a Jackson Pollock splatter painting and saying, I don't understand. I could do that. It doesn't look hard. Don't be fooled into thinking this is an easy endeavor. Like any small business, it can be a hard road to success. There's a lot of time and effort you first have to commit to before you get to the point where you can make a splatter painting. You have to go out there and like put effort into it. There, there's no magic way to do this. Um, there's no shortcut, really. Put aside the challenges of marketing for a minute. Pet businesses tend to be quite personal. Think of a dog sitter spending time in someone's house. The hours it takes to build a business and the personal effort can eventually lead to burnout. So it creates a vicious cycle and eventually can cause them to want to either walk away from the business or sell it, thinking that the business is causing it, but actually they're the ones who are the reason why it's not working, because they're not sending boundaries. Kristen began her career as a pet business owner back in the 90s when she ran a successful dog walking service. At the time of her company's sale 18 years later, she had generated millions of dollars in revenue. But one of the reasons some people choose the petpreneur path is for the perceived flexibility and work-life balance it can offer. And who doesn't want to work with their dog? A balance Kristen had to work hard to achieve with her Woof Pet Sitting Services. She was working long hours in the beginning. Probably like 80 to 100 hours a week. I mean, I was working seven days a week to run my business. And even though I had managers, even though I had dog walkers and pet sitters, I was still the one who was holding everything together. And, you know, one day I woke up and I was really thinking about success. People define success differently. For Kristen, it meant working smarter, not more. Good advice for any small business owner. Or as she says, take the busy out of your business. Being busy is not necessarily productive. And stop saying, I'm so busy when people say, how are you doing? So really doing the deep, deep dive into the internal work. And then from there, being able to set up your business in a way that's really going to support you to have more time and money through delegating, through hiring really good people, through setting up systems and strategies that are create automation. It took a lot of inward reflection for Kristen to reach what once seemed impossible, finding the work-life balance she was after. She now helps pet business owners answer the question, is that even possible? And so for me to say, it is possible. I did it. Maybe you can't see it around you, but look at me. You know, I am willing and happy to be a role model for you. So if you're embarking on a new pet business venture, remember, it may not be easy, but it's possible. And your biggest challenge might come from the dogs themselves. They're not good employees. They sleep all day, but they do they do do what I ask them to do. So I can't be too hard on them. Well, Caro, obviously one of the benefits of working remotely with us at Dog Podcast Network is you can have your dog with us. And I think listeners to this show have heard a lot about Pam's dogs and my dogs. So please share who's sharing your home with you. So Harvey, my groodle or golden doodle, I think, as you call them in the US. Um, Groodle, I like that. Okay. Yeah, groodle. So a golden retriever crossed with a poodle and uh, he's uh, just under two and a half years old. But I have to say, Harvey came into our life and um, I'd always had a family pet, but never a pet of my own. And uh, he's changed everything. In fact, I probably wouldn't be sitting here talking with you and being part of uh, Team Dog had it not been for Harvey. So he's my muse and he's totally my best friend. How has he changed your life? What's what, 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 like, where was the epiphany? (laughs) I, I think it's just that endless, boundless love. Doesn't matter what you look like, what you smell like. In fact, the worse you smell, probably the better. Um, you know, what mood you're in, you know, just happy to see you. Um, endless love um, and just turning a bad day into a great day every day. I'm fascinated by the fact that they're called grudels in Australia and not here. We In the U.S., we call them golden doodles. It's all right. It's interesting. <laughs> 
it's just, I think one of the things that we're going to be learning is that they speak differently down there, down under. Uh, and we're going to have to teach her American English. And we are going to have to learn Australian oh, English. Yes. Because she sent me a message. What did you say to me today in Microsoft Teams? Yeah. So I sent you a message to say how chuffed I was <laughs> that you, uh, you know, when, when, when I was responding to something that you'd written and you wrote back, chuffed? What's this chuffed? <laughs> I had to go look it up. It, it means happy, overwhelmed, happy, thrilled. Okay. So yeah, we're learning little things about our culture, which is, I think, one of the cool things about Dog Podcast Network is no matter where you are in the world, people who love dogs, people like you who are listening, connect. And it doesn't matter if we speak this speak or Spock. It doesn't matter if we speak the same English. <laughs> We have that common love for dogs, and that's what bonds us. Speaking of a common love for dogs, let's go visit the hydrant. They do do that down under, right? You guys, your dogs love fire hydrants down there. They will pee on anything. <laughs> <laughs> let's visit the hydrant and talk about the things that have been capturing our attention in the news this week. You know, I have a trend, actually, not necessarily a news story, but a trend I've been seeing a lot uh, since we were talking about social media earlier. This is a trend I've seen on social media. Dogs wearing goggles. Have you guys noticed this at all? No. Dog doggles. Doggles. Mm -hmm. doggles. Speaking of, uh, yes, I've seen doggles on the beach here in Hawaii because people don't want sand in their dogs' well, that makes eyes. Sense. Where have you seen them? Well, all over San Francisco. This is very fashionable. You know, they're incredible looking. They look really good. Yeah. They're like when a dog's on a motorcycle? Oh, no, that could no, be like no. Really just, cool. walking just, just walking around. Just showing off their go their doggles. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a fashion statement. Your dogs are clearly cooler in the U.S. <laughs> Were they dressed in anything other than, the, I mean, you know, just like did they have a whole uniform or was it just the, the collar and the doggles? Now, I've seen lots of dogs just wearing the doggles, but, uh, but one in particular I did see that went by wearing the doggles and a cape. Wow. Yeah. And of course, you're in San Francisco, so I wonder if they're... Yes. Th Googlers? This doesn't turn any heads. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> it's an everyday occurrence. <laughs> well, if you lose your dog, there's good news, because I saw that another California company, uh, Apple, has come out with those little um, air tags or whatever mm. their version mm -hmm. is, and people are using them as sort of a GPS for their dog, so you can either buy a little plastic thing that you insert your tab into and put it on the collar or people are making them themselves with, you know, fabric and uh, they're becoming a new trend, which uh, is a good way to find your dog if it gets lost. That's very clever. We've talked about doing that here with uh, Harvey, actually. Really? Yeah, I thought it was a great idea just to, uh, you know, make sure that we don't lose him. He's a special, special little guy. I think that's, uh, we got to, you know, the first time in my entire life in the last, I won't say my entire life, but the first time in well over 10 or 15 years that a dog escaped on me, it happened this past week, Rue, who is our adopted Maltese, who is a senior citizen at this point, um, got out for over an hour and we didn't know it would happen only mm. until someone knocked on the door and she evidently had been on an adventure around the neighborhood and finally went to some people who were playing bocce ball and said, hey, I think I need to go home. Um, but it was definitely on her bucket list of things to accomplish in her life. So maybe if we had an air tag on her, we would have known. Well, now we know what to get you for Christmas. <laughs> Does it alert you when, it, when the dog goes missing or only like when you have to go search for it? I, I think you can look on your phone. It's like the find my phone thing. Yeah, but you mm -hmm. wouldn't know that the you dog went tell. off. Yeah, it wouldn't right. like send you an alert like your dog is gone. I don't think so, but this might be a good idea for a petpreneur. Mm -hmm. You might be onto something. <laughs> this might be a whole segment like for it. us. And so, Kara, what has caught your attention? Well, speaking of uh, dogs potentially going missing, I'm going to have to keep a close eye on Harvey because he may just pack his bag and move to Melbourne. So this is uh, Australia's second largest city. It's about 800 kilometres east of where I live, but there's a food truck for dogs that's been set up there called the Canine Wellness Kitchen. And the couple who started the business were all running, already running uh, a pet food business, but say that their canine buddies, including their Cocker Spaniel Freddie, were missing out on the 
dining out experience. So they wanted to, uh, I guess, bring bring that to the dogs so that the, the owners and dogs could go out together and, and dine together. Let me just give you a, a short snapshot of what's on the menu. So for pooches... I was going to say, what is on the menu here? So on the menu for pooches, they offer everything from kangaroo meat... Sorry, Kanga. Kangaroo <laughs> meat to beef liver and raw snacks. But wait for this. They also have Freddy's Froth, which is an organic bone broth, and it's served in a beer bottle. Oh. Mm, perfect. Okay, another reason for me to visit Australia. Mm-hmm. That sounds awesome. And it's do they have any vittles for you know uh, two legged dogs? <laughs> they do. So they serve they serve menu the menus also for for owners. So you can uh, oh. yes order together, sit and dine together in a park somewhere. A complete dining experience. I love it. <laughs> Well, that is all we have for today. Thanks for bringing Dog Edition along with you on your walk today. We will be back with another episode next week. But chances are you and your dog will be taking a walk between now and then. And we have something else for you to listen to. And if you're interested in hearing more from some of our guests, please check out DPN's sister show, The Long Leash, for Jim's extended conversations. This week, you can hear my conversation with Kristen Morrison. And follow Dog Edition in your favorite podcast app so you can take us along on your dog walk next time. On the next episode, a new animal welfare action plan that's being released in the United Kingdom. And that's going to mean better protections for domestic dogs, farm dogs, and wild dogs. And I, as a fully vaccinated human being, get to travel to New York City to visit the AKC Museum of Dog. Visit dogedition.com. There's a button on the bottom right of every page where you can easily leave us a voicemail message and share your stories with us. And check out the show notes for links and information about the guests on this episode. We are looking for correspondence as we grow this podcast. And so if you're a content producer or a journalist or a podcaster or an audio storyteller who loves dogs, check out our 101 Dog Stories contest with over $15,000 in prize money. Just go to our main website at dogpodcastnetwork.com. Join our pack. Be sure to follow Dog Edition in your favourite podcast app and tell a friend about the show. I'm Caroline Winter and I'm still thinking of my tagline. Have it for next week. And I'm Pamela Lawrence. See you at the dog park. And I'm James Jacobson. I really want to thank you for listening today. On behalf of all of us here at Dog Podcast Network, we wish you and your dog a very warm aloha. Aloha.